While Metallica is one of the greatest and most successful bands of all time, drummer and co-founder Lars Ulrich has often found himself as the most criticized member of the band. From former bandmates, current bandmates, and everyone in between, here are some of the people who can't stand Lars Ulrich. Former Metallica bassist Jason Newstead left the band due to a disagreement between himself and his former bandmates. According to Newstead, following the formation of his side project Echo Brain, Lars contacted him saying that he needed to meet with the band right away. At this meeting, Ulrich would scold Newstead, saying, Dude, you know you're in Metallica now, don't you? You do understand that, right? Newstead broke down in front of his bandmates and apologized profusely. However, it was this very confrontation that Newstead says served as the origin for his departure from the band. For his part, Ulrich regrets his poor treatment of Newstead. In a conversation with Zane Lowe, Ulrich would open up about how he felt resentment towards Jason for finding musical fulfillment outside of Metallica and not being mature enough to deal with those feelings. I am finally equipped to appreciate every moment that Jason gave to Metallica, said Ulrich, admitting that Newstead's exit now makes perfect sense. Metallica's 1988 album And Justice For All is widely criticized for its dry mix and nearly inaudible bass guitar. In a January 2022 interview, the album's co-mixer Steve Thompson would place the blame directly on Lars Ulrich, saying, Lars came in with a whole EQ setup chart of how he wanted his drums to sound. And I said, are you kidding me? I think this sounds like ass. So I re-EQ'd all the drums a little bit, just to make them a little bit more palpable. However, upon hearing the initial mix, Lars was not happy with the liberties taken by Thompson and forced him to once again rearrange the drum sound to match with Ulrich's original vision. Thompson also shared that he made the bass guitar inaudible in the mix as a joke. A joke that was, apparently, lost on Ulrich, who loved the sound. Thompson hated the final result, but ultimately conceded to Ulrich. You have to respect the band's opinion, he says. It's not my record, it's their record. A feud erupted between Lars Ulrich and hair metal legends Motley Crue when Lars exposed the crew for performing with a backing track at the 1997 American Music Awards. Motley Crue bassist Nikki Sixx responded with an open letter to the Metallica drummer, which read, Dear sweet fat balding Lars, taking your ever moronic soapbox position on a subject that's none of your business has made you out to be an asshole as usual, among some other colorful insults. And no, Metallica and the crew have still not made amends all of these years later, as evidenced by Tommy Lee's relatively recent post roasting Ulrich, sharing a photo of his face under the caption, straight out of tempo. In a 2009 interview with the Montreal Mirror, Equals of Death Metal frontman Jesse Hughes would reveal that Lars Ulrich was someone that, quote, really gets his gander up, saying, You can tell the other guys in Metallica are cool. On the other hand, you have Lars, who is just this swishy Mary who grew his hair long, put on a denim jacket, and infiltrated this cool gang. Hughes would go on to describe a personal encounter with Ulrich. I went up to him and told him how much I loved Metallica, and he just looked through me and walked away. 30 minutes later, Josh Homme introduced me as a dude from the band, and he didn't even remember me from half an hour before, and went on about how he thought we were rad. The only thing I wanted to do at that point was kick his ass. If you assume that the relationship between Dave Mustaine and Lars Ulrich would improve following their joint therapy session in the 2005 documentary Some Kind of Monster, well, you thought wrong. In the nearly 20 years since the release of the documentary, Mustaine continues to blast Ulrich in the press. Recently, Mustaine would blame Ulrich for the lack of any more Big Four shows, saying, For some reason, Lars is afraid of doing more. Then, when Metallica wanted to re-release their legendary demo No Life Till Leather, Mustaine refused, citing the fact that Lars Ulrich wanted to take a percentage of the publishing royalties despite not being a songwriter on that EP. I'm not afraid of Lars Ulrich, and I'm not giving him my percentage, said Mustaine. If James wants to give Lars his percentage, that's fine if he's afraid of him. I'm not afraid of him. I'm not giving nothing to Lars Ulrich. And while Metallica has reissued their entire catalog via their record label Black & Recordings, the famous 1982 demo remains absent as Dave Mustaine has stayed true to his word and refuses to approve the release. They say that being in a band is like being in a marriage, and no duo is a greater example of this than James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich. The Metallica co-founders have been at odds with one another on multiple occasions. The earliest example was revealed in a 2021 interview on The Howard Stern Show, where the two laughed about an early Metallica performance in West Hollywood. The audience wanted an encore, and the two could not come to an agreement on which song to play. This led to Ulrich going off script and playing the song that he wanted to play. He received a punch in the stomach for his troubles. Then in 2004, the 
documentary Some Kind of Monster would chronicle the tense dynamic between the two, with the most infamous scene showing Ulrich engaging in an expletive-filled confrontation with Hetfield. James had certain conditions that he required in order for him to recommit to the recording sessions of the St. Anger album, and Lars didn't take too kindly to that. The scene culminated with a frustrated Ulrich screaming the word f directly in Hetfield's face. And finally, in 2016, Hetfield revealed to Metal Hammer that he and Lars had yet another explosive argument during the recording sessions of the album Hardwired to Self-Destruct. This was due to Ulrich's constant criticism of the riffs that James wrote, leading to the two not speaking to one another for a week in the middle of recording that album. Despite all the arguments, the two continue to enjoy being a part of the world's most successful metal band. And that's our list. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Heavy for daily videos about your favorite rock and metal bands. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching Heavy, and we'll see you soon.